Hello, Levi. It's Wednesday. For a moment, let's go back to a simpler time. It's 2009, and you're on your dad's iPad while you're at a work party you don't want to be at. If only there was something simple and entertaining to do with this slab of technology. EGADS! What's that? Is that a video game? This is so fun and intuitive! Why, there should be hundreds of games just like this one! What you wished for as a child, so naively, has become real. Angry Birds has become a multimedia empire consisting of games, movies, cartoons, comics, a VR experience, crossovers with Sonic, and so much merchandise. With all of this bloat, all of these different spin-offs and spin-offs from those spin-offs, clearly there's never been an intended central story, right? Wrong. There are videos online who will tell you the lore of Angry Birds, but that doesn't tell you anything about the real story. While kids these days love lore, it's fluff. We need story. Core characters, ideas, themes. It's time for a literary analysis of the most profitable app game of all time. First thing we need to establish if we ever want to understand this story is name our characters. First, the titular birds of Angry Birds. Red, Chuck, Bomb, Alex, Ebenezer, the Blues Brothers, and Matilda. We'll go in depth on some of these characters in a bit, but all you need to know is that they're the protagonists. Opposing them are the pigs, who stole the birds' eggs and made them angry. We've got Minion Pig, Corporal Pig, Foreman Pig, King Pig, Chef Pig, Mechanic Pig, Professor Pig, and, uh, Leonard. We're gonna ignore Leonard. These are our antagonists. For those unacquainted with story archetypes, protagonists and antagonists are diametrically opposed, meaning the protagonists want to do something, get their eggs back, and their antagonists are there to stop them. Build these little towers, I guess. We as the audience follow the protagonists as they try to achieve their goal. This however does not mean the protagonists are quote, good guys. We will come back to this later. Now that we have characters established in the two central archetypes, we need to figure out what kind of conflict this is. Literature is made up of several different types of conflict, such as man versus nature, man versus man, man versus self, etc. However, none of these categories apply to this story, as we're dealing with pigs and birds, not men. This is why recently scholars have been introducing the egg layer versus pig category of conflict, which not only includes the Angry Birds franchise, but Animal Farm, Charlotte's Web, and Norm of the North. Using this new category, we can get one step closer to getting what Angry Birds is trying to say. Another central theme to the egg layer versus pig conflict type is the intense use of foils, which are two characters that are very similar except for one or two major differences. An example of this is how Sonic and Shadow are foils, because they're both hedgehogs, but one of them is red. In this franchise, it's clear that the foils are Matilda and Ross. Now all of this is fine and good, but there are so many multimedia stories about these birds and these pigs. Surely their nuances are important to the story? Well, not really. These strangely round birds have the same goal every time, whether they're fantasy knights or hanging out with Droopy McCool. The only thing that changes is the main part of the hero's journey, the trials. And those are the boring parts. We still have the same call to action, same mentors, the same triumph, and the same restructuring to do it all again. On the surface, this is mind-numbingly boring, almost as though this mobile game was not valuable for its story, but rather its simple, satisfying gameplay that is missing in all the story adaptations and perhaps is why all of them fail. But that can't be it. I need some time to think. Perfect timing is it's time for a mini-game! This is a game I like to call the Angry Birds Metacritic Extravaganza. I'm going to read to you the descriptions for three Angry Birds games, and you're going to guess in which order they scored, and if you get it right, leave a comment, and I'll give you 100 ASA points. Ready? Then as Leonard the Pig would say, let's a go! Number 1. Angry Birds Evolution is a 2022 free-to-play 3D turn-based role-playing puzzle game where you use RPG mechanics to launch yourself at pigs and win battles. Number 2. Angry Birds Transformers is a 2014 run and gun video game where the Auto Birds fight Decepti-Hogs by transforming into vehicles and shooting them with guns. Number 3. Angry Birds Go! is a 2013 kart racing game where the birds race pigs. Maybe to get their eggs back, or maybe just for fun? I don't know. Wikipedia didn't tell me. Are you ready to guess? Here's a moment for you to lock in your guesses.
Okay, enough of that. Here's the order. Airbirds Go! is the last with a score of 60, Transformers with 70, and Angry Birds Evolution ranked the highest with a 75. To be honest, even though those are bad scores, I thought they would be so much lower. Whew, that was fun. Back to the topic at hand, though. How can this boring, basic, reheated plot create such an immense media empire? Wait a minute, I've got it! Or rather, I've had it this whole time since I already finished the script when I started recording. But it's so simple. It can still be an egg layer versus pig conflict, because it's a metaphor for humans. Have you heard of Sisyphus? He's all the rage these days with the kids, and he was cursed by Catholic God to always roll this big stone up a big hill for the rest of time. Pretty rude, honestly, but who am I to judge? This classic story is a metaphor for the follies of man, and is also the outline for Angry Birds. Red and the gang have eggs, they get stolen, they get it back, rinse and repeat until the end of time. Also, sometimes they go go-karting. Just like Sisyphus. The story lines up in so many ways, it simply can't be unintentional. It doesn't matter that Sisyphus' story doesn't literally include pigs and egg layers, because they are metaphorical representations of those archetypes, with God laying the universe and Sisyphus being dirty and underhanded. Sisyphus' foil, his brother Salmonius, have a relationship directly paralleled with Matilda and Ross. Sisyphus was a king, a, a ruler, before he fell from grace, just like red used to be important, maybe, until his anger got in the way. A rock kind of looks like an egg! And that, my friends, is the real story revealed for Angry Birds. If the Angry Birds have been punished to live a pointless loop, then there must be a reason for that punishment. Just like how Sisyphus was an evil and clever tyrant, so too must the Angry Birds have such horrible traits and commit horrible atrocities that they must be contained to a menial task for the rest of time. The Angry Birds are our protagonists, but they are not heroes. Long ago, before any of this happened, the birds and the pigs must have destroyed all of their life on the planet, and all they can do is pointlessly fight with each other until the entire universe reaches its heat death, and the useless game of Capture the Egg ends how it was always going to end. Without a winner. So what have we learned from the Angry Birds story? That war is pointless and futile, that all our actions mean nothing in the grand scheme of the universe, or maybe just that these birds are pissed off. I choose to take away that we are warned not to be these birds, so consumed by wrath that we'll never stop to address the root cause of our problems. I also choose to take away that one day we will all get to meet Sonic and hang out with him. Wow guys, I'll be honest, I got more into that theory than I thought I would. As a sequel to a really dumb Funky Kong video, this was supposed to be even more dumb and on the nose, but I ended up writing a joke that I could really get into. Once again, I gotta give a shout out to my patrons, who support my tireless work with my traditional haikus. Shadowblade9i, really appreciate all that you do for me. HBlock, don't you know, you're my favorite Patreon. That'll be ten bucks. Goopert, you are next. Better get running right now. I'm getting closer. Legitimately, thank you for all the support for the Funky Kong video. It's dumb, but I really appreciate the willingness to give a video like that a shot. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for future videos like this, I guess. And Levi, I'll see you when I see you. Number 3, Angry Birds Go, is a 2013 kart racing game. What if I did that differently? Number 3, Angry Birds Go, is a 2013 park... Pfft, I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Alright, trying again.